and welcome to this week's YouTube video. Today I'm going to talk about how using broken colour in your paintings can really help to elevate them and add interest. I am going to be using this cat painting as an example. If I show you the reference photo, you will understand why this is such a good one to practice this technique. There is a big expanse of wall and there is also a big expanse of white fur. The only areas of interest are here and here. The rest is just block colour. Therefore, I'm going to have to add interest with my colour and my brushwork. Let's have a look at the video and I will talk about what I'm doing as I go along. What is broken colour? Simply put, it just means that you apply colours to the painting in small strokes without blending so that they blend optically. The effect will be a painting that is more lively and also full of movement. Going back to my reference photo, you will notice that there is some sort of plant residue over that wall. To try to paint that literally would be madness. I'd be there forever, but I can suggest a slightly rugged wall with my use of broken colour, and this will be enough to give that whole area a bit of interest. If I show you the palette I used for that back wall, you will understand how to do this in your own paintings. The colours on my palette are cadmium yellow, yellow ochre light, transparent yellow oxide, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, transparent red oxide, ultramarine deep and titanium zinc white. The colours I used to mix up that background teal were ultramarine deep, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre light and white. I then mixed up an orange using yellow ochre light and cadmium red and added a bit to my mix. This is my base colour. If I show you the colour wheel, I would say that this colour sits here as a blue green. When deciding which colours to use for broken colour effect, you are always best off selecting the colours near your original colour. So in this instance, I am going to select a blue violet and also a yellow green. I will use my yellow green as a bridging colour next to my white. Notice that my teal is cool and also my cat's fur is cool. For a painting to be successful, it needs a balance of warm and cool colours. Also, too many cool colours together will make a painting look chalky. A yellow green will give me a bit more warmth. For this colour, I have mixed up yellow ochre light and ultramarine deep, but my mix is heavier on the yellow ochre light. This colour on its own is not enough to give me the warmth that I need. I am also going to select the complementary colour of red orange. This is my cadmium red plus yellow ochre light. Now I know the colours I am going to use, how do I get that broken effect? I am generally only looking at colour and or temperature change. I am not looking for a value change. I will use my base colour as a starting point and mix it into my purple a little, making sure when I load my brush I have both the blue and the purple on there. I do exactly the same for the orange, but just mix it into the blue a bit more. I want subtle shifts after all. I'm using a dry flat brush and just loading it up with paint, using no medium. You can see I am not laying it carefully, I am varying whether I lay blue, purple or orange. I am also allowing some of my canvas to show through too, to try to break it up even more. Plus I want some contrast in the thickness of my paint between my cat and my background. I don't want my background paint to be as thick as my cat. That rail is just suggested and painted loosely and quite sketchily. I don't want it to compete with my cat's foot, so if I can contrast my paint thickness, this will help. I haven't attempted any broken colour in my black areas. My black is a mixture of transparent red oxide, alizarin crimson and ultramarine deep. This is a warm black, so will contrast against the coolness of that wall. The nose area is a combination of yellow ochre light, cadmium red and alizarin crimson plus white. If I show you my reference photo again and turn it into black and white, you'll see what a big expanse of block colour I have in that leg and shoulder. 
If I hold a white card up to my photo, you will also see how much red and purple there is in that white. The whites I'm going to mix are a purple white with a blue leaning. This is ultramarine deep plus cadmium red plus white. As it's complementary, I'm also going to add transparent oxide yellow to this mix. This will give me a warmer grey. I will use the purple in this area here and here and the yellow purple in this area here, here and here. As I move up to the shoulder around the chin area, my purple begins to shift a bit warmer, so I'm adding a bit more red. I am guessing this may be colour reflected from the nose and mouth. As I begin to move down the paw, the purple is warmer there also, so I just add more red. I am shifting between warm and cool depending upon what I think I'm seeing. I am continuously using my white card to help me identify the colour I am seeing in my white. The brushes I am using are these flat brushes by Artmaster, although mine are pretty wrecked, but I like them that way. I like these brushes because they are very reasonably priced and it's not such an issue that they get binned after about three months. I am also using my Eclipse Comas. These brushes are really great for laying paint over paint without pulling it off. Depending upon the effect I want depends on what brush I use. I cannot be rigorous with my comas because they are too soft and not stiff enough, but they do allow for expressive strokes. My white paint is going to be pretty thickly applied in comparison to my background. Again, I am not using any medium. To get that fluffy effect, you must make sure you add enough paint and then just sort of pull and push it about exactly as I am doing in the video. The trick is to not use any medium but to keep your paint stiff. To start with, it will be a bit hard to apply but as you work into it, it begins to soften a little and you want to be really rigorous with your strokes, almost like you are stabbing at your canvas. Make sure you lay your strokes in different directions too, because fur is not neat and uniform. Because the paint is stiff, it will allow you to be really quite brutal with how you apply it. These rigorous strokes, together with my temperature changes, will give me the broken colour effect that I am after in the fur. If I show you a close-up, you'll see the strokes and temperature changes a lot more clearly. I think this effect is a really good one for giving your painting a bit of life, so have a go and try it in your own artwork. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and found it useful. Please like and subscribe if you can, and check out my website sarahhallidayart.com where you will find examples of my work and also details of online classes that I run. Thank you for watching and see you for the next one.